Have you ever gone through the attachments and presser feet that come with your sewing machine and looked at some of them and wondered, what in the heck do I do with this? I'm Jan Howell and we're going to go over the basic sewing machine presser feet and how to use them. Let's get started. When you get a sewing machine, most likely it's going to come with a little kit of supplies and assortment of presser feet. And I thought it would be helpful to just to go through these with you so that you can understand and know what they are and, and be able to use them. Most of the time you'll be using just your standard zigzag presser foot. Now obviously there's going to be additional feet that you can purchase and buy for your machine. And although most of them are similar, it's very important that you buy the presser feet that go with your machine. Even you can buy a zipper foot for all kinds of different machines, but there's not one that's will that that I know of that's universal and that will fit on every machine. So make sure that you're getting the attachments that fit your machine. So let's just go over first what a presser foot is, what it does, and how to put one on and off. So a presser foot is an attachment that will help feed the fabric through. It keeps it pressed down and when the feed dogs come up from the bottom onto the presser foot, it helps move the fabric. And we're going to be moving the fabric and doing different things with our fabric. So that's why, and using different stitches, that's why there are different types of presser feet. This is a basic standard presser foot that will allow me to straight stitch and zigzag because there is that hole right there that I can, the needle can move back and forth. You apply a presser foot on most machines by just lowering the presser foot down, lowering that down and snapping it into place. And to take it off, you just um, clip it. So we went over the all-purpose standard presser foot, and this is what it will look like. Each sewing machine will come with a manual and give pictures and uses of different presser feet, so I encourage you to go through your, your manuals. Another common foot is a zipper foot. See how that allows the needle to move to one side or the other. So you can see how this has a wider place to apply. I'm either going to place that on the left or the right. You'll want to make sure that you're using the correct stitch for a zipper application. And on my machine, it's just a straight stitch but just to check and make sure I'm going to turn my hand wheel and make sure that needle is not going to come down and hit the presser foot that it's coming down where I want it to. And just to show you how that works on a zipper is it allows me to get really close to that edge. So depending on which side of the, of the zipper you're working with depends on how you put, apply that. Bring the presser foot down and stitch really close to the teeth of the zipper without hitting it and still being able to use that. So it works really well. Um, let me just show you. So as you can see, it allowed me to get really close if I were using a regular um, presser foot, that wouldn't work. So, and then depending if I, now when I'm going to sew down this other side, say I was going to do that other side, I would just unclip that and clip it over to the other side. And you can see that I'm able to get on this side. Some machines, how you adjust that, you wouldn't adjust the foot, you would adjust the, the needle position, left or right. The next presser foot we'll go over is the overcast foot, which is really awesome. And if you don't have a serger, this is a great way to finish the edges of your seam so they don't fray. Um, it takes a little bit longer, but it's a great option. This is what it looks like. It has this little, 
edge right here that will guide you so that you can keep the, the edge of the fabric right along this edge of the longer piece here. So let me show you how that's done. So on my machine, the overcast stitches and the options that you have are this stitch, this stitch, or this stitch. And you can also use these stitches. And I have a tutorial on just this very thing that you can check out and get more information. But let's just set it for this stitch. Bring my fabric right along the edge of that extension. And you have this cool little stitch. Kind of looks like an overcast machine has done that. And pretty cool. That's your overcast presser foot. The next foot we'll go over is the blind hand stitch. And you can see how that has that little center metal piece that comes down the middle. That's what it looks like. And I have a tutorial showing you how to, to set up and sew a blind hem. But let's go over and show you just real quick how it sews. This is what a blind hem stitch looks like. You can either use this one or this for the blind hem and your machine will give you instructions. So I have folded my fabric and set it up as if I were hemming this piece of fabric or garment and I'm just going to fold that. I'm just going to place that little metal tail thing against the edge of that fold and start sewing. So as you can see, it sews a straight stitch and then it jogs over and catches that fold so that when you open that up, obviously if you were using the same color thread, you would hardly even see those stitches and that's why they call it a blind hem and you have a nice edge there. So this little guy looks kind of scary, looks intimidating, but it's really not. It's the buttonhole foot, which is really cool. Um, all different, the sewing machines will have different varieties of these different applications, but if it's a one-step buttonhole machine, which most of them are nowadays, you can put your button in this position. Let me grab a button and show you, and it will set it automatically the length and the width that it needs for that particular button. So say I'm applying a buttonhole for this button. I'm going to set the button in there and cinch it up so it holds it in place. And then I will put the buttonhole on by snapping it in place, choosing the correct setting on your machine. So on my machine, I'm just going to choose, there's different kinds of buttonholes. I'm just going to choose this basic buttonhole there. So one more thing that I have to do on my machine is pull down this little buttonhole lever and it will just hold in place and then I can start sewing. So I have marked on my garment or the fabric that I'm sewing a buttonhole on the beginning of the buttonhole where it starts and it'll extend out that way. So I can line that up with this red line and green line on the buttonhole foot. You want to hold the top needle thread so it doesn't bunch up when you're starting to sew. I'm lining up that line and I'm going to hold that thread for the first couple stitches and just start sewing. Okay. 
So pretty cool. It wasn't that easy? Buttonholes can be so intimidating, but these little gadgets make it so much easier. And you can just proceed by using your um, seam ripper to open that up. Beautiful buttonhole. You see how simple that was. Okay, so now that we've made a buttonhole, there's a foot to help you apply a button, which is really cool. It looks like this. It has just two little short things that come out at the end. I'll just snap that in place. And on my machine, to lower the feed dogs, these little jaggedy things that help move the fabric, we don't need those to be working when we're making when we're sewing a butt button. We don't want the button to be shifting. So on my machine, you just come to the back and flip this little switch, which drops the feed dogs down into the machine. My machine has a setting for applying a button and that is that right there. But if you don't have that, no big deal because all you need to do is put it on a zigzag stitch and have the length be zero. Place your button where you need it to be sewn on. Take your hand wheel and turn it towards you so you can make sure that the width is where it needs to be for that particular button. Now all buttons are different. You don't want the needle to be hitting the button. So it's good. I'm going to just start stitching. And see how it's it does several stitches on that side? That's making a knot. And when it does that, I'll bring the needle up and shift it back to those back Holes. Now if it's just a two hole button, all you need to do is that, but I'm going to shift it back and sew again. And then it just did my double stitch. Pretty simple. You have your buttonhole foot and a button foot. It makes things so much easier. The next presser foot we'll go over is the applique foot. Now, as you can see, it's wider open area than the basic standard foot. If I wanted to applique around this, one of my favorite stitches is the blanket stitch. And I'll just show you how that stitch works. And the foot just gives it a little bit wider base for these kind of stitches. You can kind of see that better on the back side. Like I mentioned earlier, there are going to be other fancy um, presser feet that you can buy for your machines. Like this one is a rolled hem, which is really good for rolling really sheer fabrics, a very narrow hem. And this is an applique foot that you'll put on a little bit differently, but it has a just a flat bottom where you can free so for quilting and other your sewing machine manual will give you some other options of feet you can buy and it will also show you the standard presser feet that come with your machine and show you how to use it so don't be afraid of looking through your handbook use it when i first started sewing i wouldn't even read through these and now when i finally did there were some really cool things that I could have been doing with my machine that I didn't know I could before. Like I, I had no idea um, the overlock stitch foot existed until, you know, several years ago. I hope that was helpful and enables you to fully use your attachments and things that come with your machine, your presser feet. If you're new to sewing or would just like some more basic sewing tips and tricks, make sure you check out my Sew Simple course, A Beginner's Guide to Sewing. I'll put the link in the description below. I hope you'll join me. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel. See you in the next class.